right. Afternoon, everybody. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us today. So um, as said, the, uh, the three of us are here to uh, talk a little bit about uh, innovation and what's been happening in terms of data center and uh, sustainability. And as said, we have Vladimir and, and uh, Mark that are here to talk and share that. And I will share some perspectives from Intel as well. So I'll, whilst I'll host this, I'll also give you some, uh, some overall perspectives. So uh, to get things going, perhaps um, we'd just like to introduce, uh, Vladimir, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. So first of all, hello, everyone. Uh, Thanks for hosting me, Steve, here. It's a, I think it's a great event and a great opportunity to discuss uh, about uh, the most challenging uh, factors of uh, our industry. Uh, I think that on everyone, everybody's lips, it's uh, sustainability, it's AI, it's uh, cloud technologies and uh, flexibility and scalability of those. So I think it would be a great, uh, great discussion. Uh, to jump back, back to your question, uh, Cluster Power is uh, currently owning and operating the largest data center campus within the Eastern European region. We are talking about uh, data uh, a campus built specifically for data centers uh, that can scale to 200 megawatts of IT load in a tier three certified environment. So we have uh, brought to the data center uh, environment and industry quite a few innovations. Uh, actually, the name Cluster Power comes from associating two industries that we've brought together. The cluster comes from the IT side, while power comes from our energy background. And uh, what's special about the project is that we've integrated a power production facility, an energy production facility within the data center campus. And we are among the few data centers in Europe, actually, that are running the IT workloads primarily from our own power production facility. So I will be glad to go into more details about this along our session. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Vladimir. So you're a self-contained, energy-efficient data center environment. So yeah, look forward to, to hear some more about that. And uh, to you, Mark, please tell us a little more about yourself. Yep, thank you very much, Steve. And uh, listen, thank you for the continued support from, uh, from Intel with uh, everything that Cisco does. Um, so my name is Mark Maslanka. I'm responsible for our worldwide sales and engineering go-to-market for our compute platform. And that also includes uh, our uh, ecosystem of partners as well, including Intel, um, what we do from a storage perspective, uh, data backup and protection, as well as uh, AI and ML and uh, hybrid cloud. So talking all of Vladimir's language. Yeah, great. Thank you, Mark. Looking forward to, um, to learning some more as well. And, and just for completeness, I run Intel's uh, enterprise business for here for Amir. So excited to share some more of this with you. So uh, bringing it back to yourself, Vladimir, um, yeah, can you talk to us specifically about the challenges that data centers are facing in, uh, in Romania, in uh, Eastern Europe? Well, I think that, uh, first of all, I would start with uh, some, some general challenges that I think are not necessarily specific to our region. Uh, but we all know that uh, within Europe there has been a big energy crisis. Um, so the, traditionally the large data center markets, which are collectively known as the flap D, it's basically Frankfurt, London, Amsterdam, Paris, and, and Dublin, uh, where there is a big concentration of data centers, have faced big challenges into obtaining uh, power availability from the grid. So basically the high, voltage, uh, the high voltage grids need to be upgraded. And as we all know that data centers consume lots of power, this has created a, a, a big challenge from an ESG perspective. So it's not only about the power consumption and power availability, but also from a sustainability perspective and also a social perspective, it has created some problems. Uh, I've heard this uh, uh, from, let's say, multiple people were saying that data centers are seen like the black sheep of industries. And why is that? Because traditionally they have been net consumers uh, with lots of power availability in backup systems on site, but they weren't able to help the grid. So basically they consumed uh, all of the energy while other industries around them were lacking this kind, of, this kind of resource. So what happened in the past couple of years is that 
it has become very difficult to build new data centers or to gain access to, um, to the high voltage grid for new projects. And more than that, municipalities and governments started imposing new legislation um, in, uh, that kind of forced uh, data center operators to start using their backup systems in order to balance the grid. Yeah? So obviously, for this purpose, uh, from a technical perspective as well as a business operation perspective, um, this has been a great challenge when you have hundreds of megawatts deployed on a certain technology and you need to adapt to new legislation and new uh, governmental requirements. So I think that this is one of the biggest challenges of the industry. Second of all, it's the AI revolution. And it has been a big impact. So public cloud definitely created a wave of change in the, how the data centers are built in how the data centers are operated. And in the past couple of years, we're seeing the next revolution that is being generated by AI deployments and more recently by very large scale gen AI um, related infrastructures. So we're seeing now an, uh, a need to become more sustainable, more efficient at scales that were not uh, maybe even possible before. Yeah. yeah, thank you. And yeah, clearly some significant challenges. And um, just to kind of reflect on how Intel sees this, at Intel we, we certainly recognize these increasing demands for compute and the need to deliver that compute in an energy efficient, sustainable fashion. Because whilst we support the growth in industry and the growth in society, it's going to be critical that we offset some of the challenges that you describe here. So uh, we're particularly excited about how we've continued to uh, benefit from Moore's Law, which sets the pace of innovation and energy efficient performance growth increase with Intel. Uh, so much so, actually, that our latest uh, uh, fifth generation Xeon products that power your data center and, and much of the, uh, the Cisco infrastructure, uh, they, they enable a consolidation ratio, about five to one. So you take, you take a five-year-old uh, Xeon server, you consolidate one, you can dramatically consolidate what you're doing to deliver sustainable computing infrastructure. So we're doing that piece, but of course it only comes to life if, um, if it's enabled by Cisco in terms of the platform. So perhaps, Mark, you could talk a little about how you're enabling sustainable solutions uh, with us together to deliver to Vladimir's needs. Sure, Steve. Uh, so look, it's table stakes for us. Um, it's the leading conversation with our, with our customers. They're expecting us to turn up and lead with a sustainable conversation. In fact, we're starting to see a lot of technology decisions being made upon the sustainability metrics of the platform, and also including procurement. Uh, procurement are now no longer just beating us up on price. They're actually looking for metrics that are associated with uh, uh, energy cost reduction and savings. So at Cisco, we're looking at a number of things. Um, you know, at the outset, it's about how do we manufacture better with uh, more consideration for energy use to, to manufacture. Uh, it just goes beyond just Cisco as well. I mean, we, we partner a lot, so it's making sure our supply chain adheres to kind of sustainability kind of uh, uh, accreditations and, and, and motions. Um, it's at the heart of our innovation. So, uh, for example, when we built UCSX, that was sustainability in mind. Um, and really what that was doing was kind of driving more performance for less power energy and being future-proofed and uh, being ready for that as well. And then there's simple things like, like packaging, you know, making sure that we are, we are, we are using our waste correct, correctly. So um, we've been using those kind of uh, 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 models to help kind of customers uh, uh, meet their sustainability needs. And in fact, uh, just recently, we won a, a global award, the SEAL Award for having the most uh, sustainable uh, compute platform in the industry. So we're doing something right, which is good. Yeah, no, tremendous to see. And I think just responding to the challenges that we all see uh, in terms of the demands of a sustainable uh, environment on that. So Vladimir, coming back to you, you know, you know, given this innovation that Cisco and Intel are bringing into the table and you clearly take advantage of that, but can you talk to us a little bit more about the state of the industry? How's the industry uh, taking advantage of the technological innovation to, to respond to the needs of the market? Well, there are multiple perspectives on that. I think that maybe to add to the, to the previous question a bit about it's actually how our users and uh, our customers actually consume the resources. So imagine that not only you have to be more sustainable to do maybe more with less, if I may say so, 
but also to do it at a much faster pace. So customers want to have flexibility into their hand to deploy any kind of workloads. Um, at the, and at the same time, to be able to scale uh, extremely, extremely fast. So we're seeing, for instance, uh, customers that are onboarding one day uh, a VM with two vCPUs just to test out something. And then the next day, they request 10,000 CPUs. And you need to be able to, to be prepared mm -hmm. to offer this kind of flexibility, but also to optimize the operations. So imagine that when you need to provide with this kind of resources, um, you need to take into account that idling CPUs are consuming power, of course, that needs to be, needs to be optimized. So if we're looking at it from a cloud operation and IT perspective, I think that one of the keys is how you orchestrate the workloads, how you actually manage the entire environment. So in our case, we're definitely we're using UCSX as a main compute platform that is being orchestrated with InterSight. Uh, besides that, we're using Cisco ACI for uh, connecting all the environment and providing with networking um, options for our customers. So actually, the, the biggest advantage that we have with using InterSight is that we are able to control the workloads. We're, we're able to forecast how the actual applications work and what are the resources that are needed in the near future. And this allows us to optimize the way that we're deploying the workloads on different compute clusters. The second, uh, uh, the second point is from a colocation facility and colocation infrastructure perspective. Um, so for cluster power, we are in a very unique position because we are controlling uh, everything from the cloud and IT infrastructure to the colocation facility and up to the energy production and energy facility. So having this holistic view over the entire process allows us to optimize it an, uh, in an end-to-end -end fashion, basically. Got it, got it. And, and you mentioned, you said that, hey, you may start with a customer that comes in with demand for a couple of platforms and then they accelerate to many. How, how, do, you, how do you plan for that? How, how do you respond to that level of change? Well, I think that uh, in, in, in our case, we, are, we were very uh, uh, in, in a unique position, let's, let's call it like this, because we've built this as a, as a, as a um, green project, yeah? So we had this idea right from the beginning about integrating as, a, as our main strategy to have focus on scalability, flexibility, security as well. So that was built into the infrastructure. So for us, uh, the modularity of UCSX solution as well as the flexibility provided by ACI um, were really important into building, the, into building our, our cloud solution. So I think that Choosing the right technology is definitely, is definitely very important. Right. No, thank you, thanks, and thanks for that color. Um, so Mark, coming back to yourself, um, so what, what are you seeing as, as you kind of look at the industry and you look at, you, you've got an example here, demands from Vladimir and the sustainability challenges, you, you, you are seeing this across many of your customers. Uh, so how are, you, how are you seeing the evolution of that? How are you architecting solutions that are, uh, that are going to deliver the kind of demands that your customers have got whilst being sustainable? Okay, good question. I mean, I think it's uh, fair to say that um, uh, Vladimir's uh, proposition is hitting on all the key demands within the industry. Um, Customers are looking for a flexible consumption model, number one. Uh, I mean, the advent of, of public cloud has really, really dr driven that. And we see a lot of our customers wanting that same experience, but maybe tapping into some of the sovereign and, and data security elements that would happen when you deal with a, a, a local pr provider. So we're seeing a lot of business outcomes uh, uh, driven from that. Um, and of course, uh, talking about business outcomes from a, a sustainability perspective, our customers are still leading with, uh, with that uh, conversation. Um, and when we go to work with them, they're asking us around uh, how do we use um, the, the, the savings to help drive business cases. So we've been working with a lot of our customers to say, look, if you were to 
modernise your environment to a new flexible environment, then um, uh, what you'll gain back in energy cost savings are actually you know, saving or paying for the cost of change, which is uh, something we're seeing very different in, in, in the market. Uh, but I suppose, quick question back to you. From, a, from an Intel perspective, how, how do you see your kind of, uh, uh, chips kind of supporting these kind of business models inside uh, Vladimir's uh, uh, business? Well, yeah, thanks, and thanks for that question. So, so I mean, a couple of things. Obviously, we, we, two things. I think from a fundamental manufacturing perspective, you know, we, we've got a big focus on energy efficient manufacturing. In fact, we, uh, we manufacture, and we're a big consumer of energy in our factories, but we manufacture our chips with 93% renewable energy. So a big focus we've got at a manufacturing level is to ensure that we are highly green and we recycle about 97% of the water that we consume. So, so we're very, very focused on having a sustainable manufacturing process. And then we're looking at how we innovate into the chips. And one of the things that uh, we've been very focused on with the latest generation of server parts is building accelerator technology into the processor platform. Uh, and what that means is the processor itself can do much more work, it, meaning you don't need so, so much infrastructure to deploy the workload. So we have accelerators for AI, uh, uh, advanced, man, uh, advanced matrix uh, extensions, uh, which is a particular technology that, that we have there. We have uh, security uh, innovation in that supports trusted domain uh, capabilities, so you've got secure. This is built into the platform, meaning you need less platforms to deliver it, meaning you've got a more energy efficient and sustainable uh, device that you have in here. So we continue to innovate. I mentioned um, Moore's Law earlier on. That continues to drive uh, the pace of innovation that we have. And we look forward. We can see another 10 years and more of Moore's Law ahead. So we continue to innovate on our roadmap. We continue to drive down the density and the energy efficiency of the platforms. And ultimately, we obviously work with yourselves uh, and the industry at large to really figure out how we can, we can build the solutions that will deliver the ultimate of uh, capability in data centers. So uh, it, it, it's amazing uh, some of the progress that we've made, but there's more to do. Right? But fun, we, have to, we have to tackle this one, uh, given the, the uh, relentless demand for data center capacity that we see out there. Um, so, uh, so yeah, thank you for the question. And, 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 with, and with that, um, perhaps you can um, just talk to me a little bit more about energy efficiency. Value. Well, that, that, that's a big topic. Uh, Steve, <laughs> so uh, I think that I could uh, I could uh, talk for hours on on this on this topic. So uh, I think it says also on the screen uh, we have a PUE rating of of 1.1, and I would start with that. So for all, for everybody here, PUE it's a it's a uh, an indicator of how efficient a data center runs. It basically says that for each kilowatt of IT load, you have extra kilowatts consumed for the data center itself. So in our case, we've achieved a rating of just 1.1. So that means that we have one kilowatt of data center consumption for 10 kilowatts of IT load. And considering that the industry average currently sits at around 1.6, we're, let's say, extremely efficient. So how are we doing that? It's this actually is, uh, sorry. Just to yeah. this is world class, right? One point yeah. one is absolutely world yeah. class uh, energy efficient. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that we're we're sitting at the top of yeah. The, yeah. Uh, the 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 industry among with let's say other innovators yeah. in, in in this space. So how do we how do we achieve that? It's by controlling the entire chain. So to be a bit more specific, we're using heat recovery mechanisms. Uh, from multiple sources. First of all, we're using heat recovery from the power generation plant. And the second heat that we're using, it's from the data center itself. So what we're doing with this heat, it's actually that we're transforming it into cooling. We're cooling water with heat. So we're using the thermal energy and we're um, cooling the water. So basically, the data center runs on chilled water that comes from a different source than, let's say, normal, normal energy. And then going through the room chillers or the backdoor chillers or even for direct chip cooling solutions, uh, you just need the fans to push the, uh, the air and circulate the air. So basically, this is why we are achieving a really, really low um, PUE. Now, secondly, I think it's uh, important to explain a bit about how we are producing the, the energy. 
And uh, this has been a very interesting project on its, on its own, to be honest. Uh, this has been done in a partnership with Rolls-Royce, the, the power generation unit, not the car manufacturer <laughs> <laughs> unit. Um, and uh, we're talking about the first hybrid, uh, uh, the first generation of engines that are hybrid. They are working on natural gas and hydrogen. And by the way, uh, there is a European Union legislation initiative that states that by 2030, data centers should consume at least 25% of their energy from renewable sources like hydrogen. So basically, we already have that built in the energy consumption model of our data center for almost two years already. So this solution actually allows us to become even more efficient by looking at how we integrate with the energy grid. Mm. So what happens is that we're producing energy and sending it to the data center, but we all know that data centers have peaks of consumption. So what actually happens is that access, access energy can be used to balance the network. To put it in other way, we are in a microgrid environment. What this means actually is that we can run in island mode, so we can be completely disconnected from the national grid, and we would still be able to power up the data center in a tier three environment. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think that this is this is a um, this was a, a model, a blueprint that we thought of right from the beginning, and that we're looking to replicate definitely. Yeah, su yeah, super impressive and, you know, as I said, world-class capability. Mark, anything you want to add to uh, what Vladimir has just described? Well, it's, it is very impressive. Uh, um, and if you think that uh, if other you know, uh, data center owners or enterprise organizations were to, you should actually uh, patent your blueprint because I think we could uh, you know, globally sort out a whole load of uh, the energy crisis just by uh, modeling your, your blueprint for, for data centers. Because I think it, it does come up as one of the, the worst consuming of power out there. And it's only going to get more, you touched on the, the, uh, the, the next trend around artificial intelligence and machine learning. I mean, the computation, the GPUs, and the energy, and uh, if you just look at some of the costs associated with running those environments, it's, it's horrendous. So yeah, full credits, well done. Yeah, so, so that's, that kind of takes me on to the question I wanted to ask you. So, so, wh so where, are you, where are you heading? Where is Cisco heading? As you, as you look at these trends, we're here talking a lot about AI. Compute continues yep. to accelerate. The demands of industry and consumers for data center capability is, is um, it, it, it just continues and continues to grow, right? It, it, it's relentless, yep. the level of demand. So how is that shaping your strategy? Where, where do you think, see things going and what are Cisco doing to, to respond to this um, insatiable demand? Okay, so, so first of all, um, let me go back to kind of our, our, our compute platform. UCSX because uh, X stands for 10. It's got, you know, kind of a decade roadmap. You talked about your roadmap as well. So it's very nice aligned. Thank you very much. And, um, and again, you know, that's part of the sustainability piece. Having a platform that is going to live with you and it's future ready. So it's there for water cooling. It's there for, for, for CXL. Um, so if you think about the future requirements, you've got a platform that's modular and it's going to continue through, through the life cycle to capture those trends. And those trends for us, you know, really, really boil down to kind of probably uh, uh, three major areas. The, you know, the first one is artificial intelligence and machine learning. And you're going to see us launch uh, a number of capabilities jointly with partnerships as, as, as well that's going to really satisfy that need from uh, an end user perspective, mm -hmm. but, but also from an end user perspective that's building data centers to provide those capabilities to, 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 to be consumed. The second area is around hybrid cloud and multi-cloud. We've seen a, a, a massive uptick in customers that are taking a more pragmatic viewpoint to the cloud and repatriating applications onto data centers and uh, also to providers as well who can manage the platforms way better than uh, the, their own environment. Uh, and lastly, we're seeing a lot of use cases around uh, edge technologies as well. So you're going to see us uh, uh, spend a lot of time developing and bringing out new offers uh, to market which is associated with uh, edge solutions. Okay. No, tremendous. So, uh, 
wonderful to see. And obviously, we do a lot of work together in terms yeah, of building indeed. those future yeah. robots. So very excited about that. It doesn't so. happen without Intel. <laughs> well, collaboration, yeah. right? It's all, all about collaboration. Um, so hey, um, I'll come on to if there's any questions. Have a think in a moment. But but perhaps just before I get there, so so Vladimir, for for our audience here. Um, if people are thinking about their data center, they're thinking about, well, hey, I've heard some interesting stuff. You know, any advice or recommendations that you want to share with the audience? Uh, well, I think that there are multiple angles on that. Well, I think that it's, it, we're, we're definitely looking uh, uh, at, at a stage. We're, we're definitely in a stage where um, efficiency is extremely important, in which we need to figure out how we're doing more with less and at the same time, how we're able to optimize the costs of, of, of operation. Um, so I think that for, uh, for those that are building a, new, building a new data centers, those are definitely considerations that uh, need to be well thought of right from the beginning. I think that the AI revolution and the AI chal challenges are again extremely important. It's one thing to 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 deploy a, a general cloud computing platform, and to uh, it's it's a completely different thing to add uh, a bunch of GPUs that need to be scaled really really fast. So I think that maybe uh, maybe uh, uh, an advice would be to to come to Intel, to come to Cisco, to co come to Cluster Power and look at some models that have already been deployed and are working and have been validated by the industry uh, before jumping in, into making an investment. Yeah, okay, no, thank you. All right. So, um, hey, I'll, I'll come to questions. I think they're going to drop. There's a, there's a slide they'll pop up here which has got contacts if, um, if you'd like to know more about some of the things we discussed. But uh, you know, just on that note, any, any questions that anyone would like to ask from the audience? Yes. Maybe. Oh, sorry, there's a microphone here, thank you. Uh, the question is uh, related to the kind of workload. Are you using virtualization, bare metal, containers? What is the trend for uh, application perspective? Well, currently we're seeing, uh, we're seeing uh, use cases for all of the, everything that you've mentioned. Definitely we're seeing that containers are, are, are getting more traction compared to VM to, to uh, classical uh, virtual machine and virtualization environment. But also we have for, uh, let's say, more private cloud or private uh, infrastructure requirements, we're seeing more and more bare metal, uh, bare metal requirements. So currently we're doing, uh, uh, let's say, projects on AI space, so building large scale uh, artificial intelligence clusters that are somehow dedicated for training of foundational models in which, um, in which the customers prefer to deploy their own orchestration or, or uh, uh, software stack. However, uh, from a technological perspective, they are using containers. From a management perspective, they are doing their, their management. So we're definitely seeing uh, like I mentioned before, we're definitely seeing an increase in the demand of uh, container-based solutions. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the question. Any other questions? All right. So, uh, so thank you for your time and listening. As mentioned, uh, the, the contact information there, or if you'd like to know more, including uh, the specific case study from uh, Cluster Power's amazing world-class data center initiative. Uh, hopefully this has been useful, giving you some uh, insights for that. Any questions, feel free to come up and ask us. Otherwise, uh, thank you for your time and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Uh, cheers. Well done. Thanks, Thanks Steve.